From the start, it was clear that Ed and Rowena's house was going to reflect them and every aspect of their lives. It's quite organic in nature and very much of the ground. We're sort of amassing materials all the time. Mm -hmm. well, we have chestnut from a woodland. We have a certain amount of stones on site that we can use. You've got a budget? Um, in a vague sort of way. <laughs> this was unlike any other project I've seen. No hard and fast schedule and an approach best described as fluid. It might be that we don't finish for another five years, but it's all part of life, isn't it? Ed and Rowena's handmade house will be tucked into the hillside. The structural frame will be locally sourced timber and infilled with straw and clay. Downstairs, family life will revolve around a rough and ready kitchen, hand built by Ed, of course. This sits next to the heart of the house, best described as a medieval hall heated by a great stone hearth and lit by a cathedral-scale cruck-framed window that'll enjoy the vast panoramas across their Herefordshire Valley. Behind the hall will sit a snug and a small workroom for Rowena. In the centre of this arrangement, a sculpted timber staircase will lead to a first-floor gallery come landing. On one side of this, Ed will build three bedrooms for the children and a shower room and on the other, two more bedrooms and a family bathroom. Above this handcrafted building, Ed plans a dummy thatched mansard roof. The plan was to build with as much found material as possible, economical as well as ecologically sound. And it all started with timber from the local woods. It feels really good just to be getting it from two miles away, yeah. uh, cutting it, sawing it, and building it on, at home. The children see this happening, and really, for them, it's quite normal. It's so much how we live and how, how our lives are. That's it. By exploiting his carpentry skills, Ed knew he could save money and do most of the work himself. A noble ambition, of course, but the result was a glacially slow project. Ed's wild designs are practical too. He made the worktops from sycamore, a wood with supposedly antibacterial qualities. The supports are the familiar split chestnut. Having a circular counter, yes. if you if you if you come this way, if you walk round, you just sort of follow it round. There's the no sink. there's no hard... to do the washing up. <laughs> you can but do that. Later. The sink itself is also curved. Is that, that follows the same curve? Follows... That's not a common thing, is it? Great big Belfast sink with a curved edge to it. Yeah, no, it is, I think, unusual. At the stove, though, a more familiar a rectangular shape, that's kind of... That looks very new. A, a family that we've known for many, many years make those stoves. Seriously? I love the fact <laughs> that the one thing you buy that's new in the house, the one bit of bling, still actually has a very strong personal connection. <laughs> it's great. So, all this time, Ed has, it seems, been building an adaptable home to suit the family both now and down through the generations. That long view, the taking time to think, has defined this project. This house is more than a home. They want it to be their legacy. And in fact, the house is furnished and decorated with the work of both family and friends, in keeping with their passion for keeping things personal, handcrafted, and slow. <laughs>